Hi Tom here and welcome to this week's Circle Line Art School video, how to draw a house in cross section in one point perspective. The first step in this drawing is to draw a horizontal line in the middle of your page. Next draw a cross in the centre of this line for the vanishing point. All diagonal lines in this drawing will end up at this vanishing point. Now draw a vertical line on the left of the vanishing point and then another vertical line further to the right of the vanishing point. Next draw two more horizontal lines to make a rectangle and this will be the first room. We can add a double line around this rectangle to show the thickness of the walls in this cross-sectional drawing. A cross-sectional drawing is like the house has been cut in half and we can see inside the rooms of the half-cut house but also we can see the thickness of the walls where it's been cut in half. Next, draw four diagonal lines from the corners of your rectangle to the vanishing point in the centre of the drawing. We can already see, hopefully, that the walls, the side walls, are appearing in this one-point perspective drawing. Now we can add another diagonal to make a hallway coming towards us. And now we can draw another smaller rectangle using the diagonal line on the right so that we know how high this rectangle will be so that the diagonal line on the right represents the line between the ceiling and the wall on the right so we don't want the vertical line to go above the diagonal line. On the left, we can add a short diagonal line to make this new rectangle into a three-dimensional shape. Now I'm going to add an open doorway and then add another rectangle here for the back wall of the hallway, otherwise it would look endless going all the way to the vanishing point. Next in the doorway here we can add some simple steps, some rectangular shapes that need to get shorter as they go up, they get shorter on the right. We could add some horizontal lines along this hallway with bigger gaps as the lines get closer to us. This will help create a sense of space in our drawing. I'll add some more lines on the right here, again starting close together and then getting further apart as they get closer to us. Now we can erase some of the guidelines that we no longer need in this drawing. I'll speed up the drawing a moment here while I go over the lines that we've drawn in pencil with a thin black pen. Any of the pencil lines at this stage, if I need to change them, I can just correct them as I go over them with a pen. Next I want to draw some steps, but for these I want to make them in front of the cross section. So first I'll draw a diagonal line here, which is at the same distance that the cross section is at. And then I just need to add, we can add a zigzag line to create the steps on this diagonal line, which is the same distance as the cross section of the room. We can draw a vertical line here and then add a diagonal line from our vanishing point to make this a three-dimensional shape, to make it look like a three-dimensional shape. Then if we draw another diagonal line on the left, we have another hallway below our first hallway that we have already drawn. So sort of one hallway on top of another hallway, showing the two floors of the building that we've drawn so far. Again, we can draw a rectangle at the back for the back wall of the hallway because again we don't want it to look as if it goes away endlessly into the distance. Now we can add a series of diagonal lines from the vanishing point going to the corners of each of the zigzags of the steps that we drew earlier. 
and we can continue these diagonal lines towards us, coming towards us. So we are creating steps that come right out towards us, further than the cross section of the drawing. I can extend the hallway at the front here too. Now I'll speed up the drawing again for a little while, while I just go over the pencil lines with a black felt tip pen. Next, on the left of the first vertical line that we drew, we can draw three sides of a rectangle. And then add a wall on the left, a vertical line here. Now to make this open rectangle into an interior swimming pool, we just need to add a slightly wavy horizontal line at the top along here. Again, we can make the swimming pool look three-dimensional by using our vanishing point to find the diagonal lines to give the shapes that we've already drawn a depth using one-point perspective. I will draw a long step on the left along here. We can find the top of the wall on the left and the line up to it with the height of the first room that we drew sort of reading across from there. Again, I'll go over all the pencil lines that I've drawn with a pen. Now I want to add some distorted wavy lines in the swimming pool horizontal and vertical lines to give the impression of tiles seen through water. Next, on the right here, I want to extend this line to make an overhang. We can give this the same thickness and create depth by adding a diagonal line from the vanishing point. Now we can add some thin columns to support this overhang. The first column needs to go all the way down to the ground. And then if we draw a diagonal line from the baseline of the ground, that will show us where all of the other columns need to finish at. So this diagonal line going from the vanishing point to the base of the first column will show us where all the other columns need to rest upon. Now there is some space at the top of this drawing, so I'll add another story to the building. And for that, just need to draw a horizontal line for the height of the story. But I'll make this story of the building behind the cross section of the rooms, so that it's not cut in half as it were. So the steps that we drew earlier on are in front of the cross section, and this new story for the top of the building is behind the cross section. Now I'm just going to go over all of the lines with this black pen. I'll add more lines in the pool, but I'll make sure that they're all broken lines. I don't want these lines too solid because we're looking through water that I want to give the impression that the water could be moving and that it's not the same as the structure, the architectural structure of a solid wall. And I'll add a dotted line for the horizon. In this drawing I use a 4B pencil, a black pen, a grey marker pen and some coloured pencils that mix with watercolour to blend. If you want to add colour to your drawing, any colour medium would work perfectly well. So speeding up this video, I will use the grey marker pen to add some tone to the walls of the building, starting with all of the walls on the right hand side, just giving them a grey tone. I will add a darker tone to all of the ceilings as well. Next, time to use these watercolour pencils to add some colour to the pool, keeping quite a lot of white visible. So if you use colour felt tip pens, they would work very well for this as well. 
and now just adding some water to blend these colours that I put in this area. I will add a grey to blue to the sky. I hope you like this video and find it useful for your own drawings. Please join Circle Line Art School and I will help you with your drawings. Just click on the links below to find out more information. To receive a new art tutorial every Saturday, please subscribe to my YouTube channel Circle Line Art School. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.